Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Q3 and nine months financial year 24 earnings call. Today we'll be discussing our company's financial performance and strategic decisions. Our investor presentation is available on the exchange, and we hope you have had a chance to review it. I am pleased to announce that Gravita India has demonstrated robust performance during Q3 and nine months financial year 24. Before we delve into the results, I would like to share some project updates. I am pleased to announce that Gravita's step-down subsidiary, situated in Tanzania, East Africa, has started commercial production of recycled PP granules from its new plastic recycling plant, having an annual capacity of around 1,800 metric ton per annum. The company will be procuring domestic plastic scrap for production from this plant, and it will cater to the needs of plastic manufacturing industries situated in Europe and Asia. This plant will help the company to optimize its sales mix by increasing the contribution from plastic business. Let's now discuss the operational performance. Coming to capacity expansion, we are making significant strides towards our goal of attaining a capacity of 4.25 lakh metric ton per annum by financial year 26. As on 23rd January 2024, Gravita had expanded its capacity to 2.86 lakhs metric ton per annum compared to 2.33 lakh metric ton per annum on, 20, on 31st March 2023. I am pleased to announce that the production has increased by 17% in Q3 financial year 24 on year-on-year -year basis. However, the company has witnessed the sales volume drop of 7% in Q3 financial year 24 on a year-on-year -year basis, lead volume increased by 2% to 34,488 tons on a Q-on-Q -Q basis, whereas aluminium and plastic volume dropped by 3, 3,264 tons and 2,458 tons respectively. The reason for drop in volumes was due to logistics disruption. To reiterate our CAPEX plan for the future expansion, to reach the targeted capacity of 4.25 lakh metric ton per annum by financial year 26, we will be incurring a capex of approximately rupees 600 crores by financial year 26, covering both existing and new verticals. The estimated capex for existing and new verticals is approximately rupees 400 crores and rupees 200 crores respectively. <coughs> Sorry. Moving to financial results for nine months financial year 24. Consolidated revenue for nine months financial year 24 increased by 12% to rupees 2,297 crores. 47% of revenue in nine months financial year 24 came from value-added products in line with our vision of achieving 50% revenues from this category. Consolidated adjusted EBITDA for nine months financial year 24 increased to rupees 238 crores, up by 19% on a year-on-year -year basis. Consolidated PAD showed an increase of 24% to rupees 170 crores in nine months financial year 24 compared to same period last year. PAD margin increased by 7.4, increased to 7.4%. Coming to Q3 financial year 24, revenue for the quarter witnessed a slight drop of 2% uh, to rupees 758 crore on a year on year basis because of drop in volumes which were impacted due to logistics disruption. However, this was largely offset by increased realizations. On a year-on-year -year and Q-on-Q -Q basis, adjusted EBITDA increased by 26% and 11% respectively to rupees 90 crores. EBITDA margins also showed a significant increase, of, increase to 12% compared to 9% in Q3 financial year 23. Gregta reported a consolidated PAT of 60 crores with a 20% and 4% growth on a year-on-year -year and quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, respectively. PAT margin remained steady at 8%. In conclusion, I would like to emphasize that Gravita is making significant strides towards realizing its ambitious clear vision 2027. Our emphasis on diversifying into new business verticals targeting a revenue, of, revenue CAGR of 25% plus and profitability growth of 35% plus achieving a ROC of 25% and increasing the known led business to 25% plus. Highlights our commitment to sustainable development. Successful strategies such as capacity expansion, increased proportion of value-added products, and proactive risk mitigation through back-to-back -back hedging have contributed to strong and sustainable margins. 
with our with our global presence integrated supply chain and stakeholder support we are confident in realizing our vision 2027 that's all from my end i would now request to open the floor for questions and answers thank you and over to you mr moderator thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone phone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Kushal from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Okay, can you explain more on this logistics sleeper? Excuse me, Mr. Kushal. Can you be a little louder, please? Yeah, sir. Can you explain that logistics discussion? How long the impact would be? The quantum of impact and everything on that end. So basically, this uh, logistics disruption came uh, because of this Red Sea issue. Uh, so we expect to be over uh, by this quarter end uh, current quarter end or latest by april end so but we uh, um, as a for the company we are taking some alternative uh, alternatives we are using certain strategies to mitigate this impact on uh, on the bottom line of the company so we are uh, moving certain goods to india also to other territories also to uh, to uh, maybe remain on lower on the volumes but to maintain the bottom line so quantum impact passes from overseas plant uh, uh, to europe over uh, disrupted because of this issue and also from india some exports uh, from our mundra plant was disrupted so we are looking at alternatives to uh, uh, sell this material to some other markets probably and also uh, uh bring some material from our overseas plant into india which will impact our revenue for some time but it will not have the major impact on the bottom line during this period quantum of impact if you can uh, for this quarter would be around sorry quantum of impact would be for this quarter so quantum of uh, impact on the volumes uh, approximately 100 Uh, 100 to 120 crores uh, of revenue. Sure, equal volumes. Sure. Next question, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Thakkar from ASK Investment Manager Limited. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yeah, a little louder, please, if you can. Yes. But otherwise, you are audible. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So, I just wanted to understand from you uh, what we've seen in OP for uh, the lead business in particular, which is at twenty-three rupees a kg, and it appears to be more on the higher side of what we believe is the normalized operating profit. So, can you just let us know? Is there any one-off there sitting there, or uh, what is the reason for this uh, higher operating profit burden on the lead business? so uh, basically as we discussed that there was some uh, logistic issue of red sea and there was some volume impact uh, where we could avoid certain volumes so when we uh, when the situation this kind of situation is there when we are not able to increase the volume so the lower uh, margin uh, business which is where uh, like uh, the tooling business where we get slightly lower uh, you know pattern ebita so we avoid to do that kind of business and uh, at that point of time uh, overall um, pattern ebita you know improves but with the lower volumes so uh, that strategy was there in this uh, quarter specifically where volumes were lower pattern was higher but yes this is a uh, not a normal situation so we expect to be uh, whenever the normal volumes comes uh, after this issue is resolved so we should be normal to the 18 to 19 rupees per kg of uh, per kg of margins 
Sure. So that will get then compensated by higher volumes. Uh, so that Absolutely. is how that gets compensated. Correct, 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 correct. And so when we say we'll be moving certain materials to the Indian manufacturing sites uh, for recycling, uh, does that essentially uh, mean that there will be some impact on uh, working capital as well? Uh, to, yeah. To that yeah, there will be some. Yeah, there, definitely there will be some impact on the working capital cycle. But at the same time, currently we are enjoying some arbitrage because Indian market is a little favorable. So I think it will be more than compensated for the uh, by having some additional uh, uh, realization. Yeah. So this quarter also the the margins were higher. So uh, overall, when we get this material to India, so we slightly get better margins. So uh, that point of time, uh, the ROC remains same. But at the same time, we cannot we cannot import all the material to India. So it will have some impact if if this situation continues. Uh, uh, in the in in the queue for also mm. so it's fair, fair to understand that there will be certain impact on volumes in the fourth quarter as you look how best to optimize uh, given the situation yeah. that we are facing Absolutely. and that yeah. you will try and uh, optimize or set off that by doing higher margin products for the time being and yeah. then yeah. look at it more structurally to see how things can be worked out yeah so because because we have long term uh, contracts so it's not easy to to find new uh, customers probably on the short term it may have some impact but because our production is not going down our production has increased our capacities have also increased so in the longer run it will come back to normal very soon and so in volume terms what could that impact be if you could quantify you given the revenue impact uh, but what could be the volume impact because so of this? because there is no price fluctuation so the revenue impact is only you know the volume impact and revenue impact is same because okay. there is no price, not much, not much fluctuation in price. So we should ideally take whatever is the LME uh, plus your conversion and the uh, margin there, and then try and uh, get a number of the volume. That would be a fair number on the volume. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. And so this impact is not purely on lead; it's on other products as well uh, because of this no. red sea issue. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, this is slightly more in case of plastics because plastic uh, is very uh, plastic is not able to come to India. So lead we can you know bring to India, but plastic is not the case for India. So uh, it's more impact on plastic and so aluminium also because in our case most of the aluminium gets manufactured uh, in overseas plant only. So mm -hmm. the proportion of aluminium uh, production in overseas is uh, more than seventy percent. So therefore the impact in aluminium also is there. So lead the tepid and uh, volume growth is not purely on account of logistics. There is some other factor as well. No, it's it's purely on on account. So because the production is higher, so we have more stock uh, uh, finished goods of uh, more stock of finished goods available in our factories, which will probably be diluted in uh, this quarter probably or otherwise at the max next quarter. Understood. And so the alternate route to reach Europe uh, will mean uh, what degree of higher freight cost that you would have to incur if this so right now right now it's basically uh, uh, I mean very difficult to a certain because even even at the current level the freight costs have gone seven to eight times uh, mm -hmm. so so it's very difficult to a certain but I think it will normalize for a period of time in the sense that uh, either the premium uh, uh, to these markets will come down, and similarly, the price of raw material will also uh, will also drop a little. So, mm -hmm. but it, these are these disruptions only have an impact on a on a uh, short term uh, period. In the long term, uh, everything will then uh, normalize. I mean, either because if the trade cost remains higher, then what will happen is that if the premium for the product from in, from uh, these countries into Europe will drop down a little. To compensate for the uh, uh, for the increase in trade cost, but similarly the raw material cost will also drop down. So it's only in the short term basis that these things impact you a little. Understood. Then our contracts uh, have the capability to uh, or the flexibility to build them at a higher cost because this is something which is obviously not in the normal course of business. So uh, as I mentioned, that in in the shorter term no, but in the longer term of course uh, either we'll have to. Uh, give in and reduce some premium or they will increase the premium and things like that will happen. Understood. Understood. And but but as, as, as I mentioned that it will also have impact on the raw material cost from in the, from these countries. So, so you think overall, 
RM will also go down for you, which comes to yes. you in terms of... Yes, if, if, if this thing continues for a longer period. Okay. And the scrap for this is procured, so is it, so from the plants where we are manufacturing, this is more inbound uh, raw material that comes through or it's more locally sourced uh, material yeah, locally. and that gets recycled? Yes, it, it's more locally sold uh, material. Mm -hmm. But because it's not only us, the prices for logistics increases for everybody else. So the the fair thing is that it gets distributed across the uh, the, the supply chain or the value chain. So if the premiums go go down, the in the long run, the uh, the prices of the raw material will also come down. So a fair assessment will be that because RM is locally sourced, you see pricing going down there, and given material is not moving efficiently yes. uh, to the European markets, uh, most of recyclers like you will probably demand a higher premium uh, because an alternate freight route has to be then developed. So that is how, from a more medium to long term perspective, profitability comes back, but the short term disruption has to be managed. Absolutely. You're right. So, so this is very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow up question? We will request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Suruchi Parmar from NX Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the aluminum. Victa per metric ton aluminum has dropped uh, from the last quarter as well as from the last year also. So, uh, what is the uh, reason for that? Okay, so basically, uh, as we discussed uh, every time this part, so basically, in in case of aluminium, uh, we are not fully hedged uh, on the metal side because this is a aluminium alloy which we deal into. Uh, so we don't find any solution for hedging of this metal. So whenever there is a price fluctuation, uh, so it impacts the Certain appetite margin also, and sometimes volume also. So we curtail certain volumes which are uh, which are taking more working capital cycle or cash to cash cycle. So we avoid those kind of to mitigate certain risk to avoid certain risk. So uh, that is the reason where uh, where the certain um, appetite of aluminium business. Uh, so till the time we find a solution for this hedging, uh, and in this case we are talking to. Uh, MCX also for uh, giving us a solution for hedging of aluminum alloy, uh, the product which we are dealing into. So till the uh, time we are, we are finding such solution, uh, we uh, we are you know uh, slightly the margins on this aluminum alloy will be fluctuating, and also the freight cost has increased as I mentioned earlier. It has also impacted uh, to some extent the Vita margins. But we see some recovery uh, from next quarter onwards. Uh, we we are already seeing some uh, changes there, and we believe that in the next quarter the EBITDA margins would probably be a little better than this quarter in aluminium. Okay. So going forward, uh, like uh, our lead business will be the same uh, amount, or the lead will uh, taper down and the aluminium. Plastic and whatever so the sustain, uh, sustainable margin is around. Yeah, so basically the sustainable margin for lead uh, is 18 to 19 rupees currently, and uh, for uh, aluminium it should look, uh, so currently it is approximately 9 rupees per kg, which should go up to uh, 10 or 11 rupees per kg in a shorter term, and in the longer term it should go back to the normal level of 16, 17 rupees per kg. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. And uh, can you just uh, tell uh, about, uh, like you said, that uh, revenues uh, are uh, the volumes offset by the increase in realization. So, in which segment the realization has actually increased in lead, aluminum, or plastic? No, it is it is improved slightly improved in case of lead only, uh, where we improved certain uh, because. Uh, certain goods were shipped from overseas to India where we do certain value addition. So uh, in that case, uh, 
the relation pattern is improving so uh, in actually in lead uh, generally we we have we cover both the markets indian market as well as global market whereas in aluminum uh, entire sales is outside india i mean uh, approximately maybe 90% of the sales is outside india so we could not take advantage of uh, bringing that material into india okay. in aluminum okay so so bringing into india uh, is beneficial for us for uh, uh, the revenues part or uh... yeah so in case of yeah in case of lead we find certain uh, arbitrage opportunities by selling into india but that is not case not the case for aluminum because in aluminum we have only a single market outside india so we are uh, so uh, the opportunity which is available for only for lead where we can improve certain uh, certain relations better relations at certain times when the indian market is higher mm -hmm. okay thank you so much sir i'll join back in thank you the next question is from the line of vikas mistri from monsort adventures please go ahead hi good morning sir thanks for the opportunity i have a couple of questions uh, first uh, pardon me for the slightly long discussion uh, in recent times we started to venture into so many recycling avenues like aluminum steel paper and all that we have ambitions to do that uh for that we need a, a good sourcing for these uh, uh these materials do we have that sourcing infrastructure ready for the plants to run point number a and point number b uh, we are not hazing uh, the newer uh, uh, aluminum and steel and what is the hazing strategy for all the materials and uh, to put that into context if we don't have both of the things ready it is like uh, venturing into uncharted waters and not having proper plan for that yeah so uh, i i think it's a very relevant question uh, to answer your first question definitely we have our own uh, uh, sourcing uh, in place sourcing system in place where we we, we source everything including uh, the new verticals also that we are uh, we are dealing into and we will only put up a plant when we are 100% confident of having that arrangement where we can source raw material for the new plant whether it is for paper or for steel or for any other commodity so that that is a prime uh, thing to consider when when we go into a new vertical whether we can source that material or not so that definitely would be there to answer your second question definitely that is a that is a challenge that is going to come uh, and we we constantly look at opportunities to find a solution to that and as i mentioned earlier probably uh, uh, we are in discussion with mcx in india to uh, set up a hedging mechanism unfortunately it is taking a little longer uh, because it is something that is totally new to the uh, uh, to the exchanges uh, because it's not a very freely traded commodity uh, there are certain specifications uh, issue that can uh, crop up so it, it generally take a little longer time but we are expecting probably by first quarter next year uh, to have this uh, aluminum hedging in place uh the other alternative is uh, to keep a constant uh, flow of material and a constant amount of iron stock in your uh, in your kitty so what happens is that whenever i am buying i should have a natural hedge i i should have an order from a customer for the material that i am buying today so that is what we are keeping but when when the volumes uh, grow then uh, having a i mean then maintaining this iron stock is very difficult so we we are constantly looking at opportunity to do this but what we assure you is that it is only a a impact on a quarter to quarter basis because if you keep the same business model on then whatever losses you have made when the when the prices come down you will recover those losses when the prices go up if you keep the inventory level common so although it may impact on a year to year basis but because we we only take uh, ma uh, the 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 margins the conversion margins it will not impact us in the longer run i said just a follow up on that you said that uh, uh, you make up the gains in the next quarter and on year on year it looks uh, quite fine but the problem is that it increases volatility in earnings 
and it also introduces fragility in the business and from investors perspective and from the business perspective that fragility is not right it would be very prudent to have a hedging solution that will uh, back to back hedge and uh, point b is that uh, whatever the com- uh, apart from aluminum other commodities are they can they be hedged or they also have some specification issues which can't be hedged so so i'll, I'll tell you for example in plastic generally uh, and we are moving towards more and more tolling arrangements so what happens in this case is that we already have arrangements with uh, with the customer to provide them say around a, a particular volume of uh, business per month and we only procure that much material during that month so uh, it's more like a tolling business uh, we buy from uh, their factories raw material or waste material process it and give it back to them so that is another alternative that we are working on very closely with oems so that will also take care of uh, any volatility uh, that may affect your business okay you are saying that in other uh, other avenues which we are foreing into steel paper and plastics we don't have to do this not steel problem. not steel i'm talking about plastic currently steel uh-huh. is a, steel is a little uh, uh, i mean further away uh, in terms of implementation of a of a new vertical we are currently looking at plastic aluminum uh, paper and then probably steel little lithium and uh, recycling and then steel will follow up so so what i am talking about right now is up, up from uh, aluminum and plastic perspective okay 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 so my last question is on uh, what is the technology so can you doing? sorry to interrupt uh, can you join the queue again okay thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Shabri Azarika from MK Glow. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. So two questions. Uh, firstly, in terms of this Red Sea disruption, uh, so Q3 uh, numbers were the worst of it, or are we seeing Q4 turning out to be uh, similar, or uh, or especially on the freight side? uh whatever numbers were posted in q3 that captures the jump in freight or in q4 we could see that uh, go up so uh, uh uh to answer your question it is very difficult to say but the thing is that uh, we are looking at finding solutions generally in the shorter term it will impact you more because you you don't have any alternatives in the short term but in the longer term we are now trying to find out uh customers orders from uh from uh, places other than europe so in the shorter term it is very difficult to move material from uh, one source to another source but in the longer term probably in in q4 we would find a solution so that we will divert the material that was supposed to go to europe and it will go somewhere else so hopefully it will be better than q3 okay so you expect q4 to be uh, better than q3 in terms of the operational number uh, perform numbers right yes. and yes. freight also you are saying that uh, q4 uh, will not see any jump in uh, freight cost compared no, to no so we, we don't know we don't know whether freight will increase or not but we'll find a solution in the sense so, so if the freight remains high uh, to go into europe then we'll probably not sell enough in europe and we'll sell to some other uh, geographies maybe uh, asia or maybe us or things like that Uh, right sir uh, and uh, this red sea disruption i mean this there's no movement of uh, ships no, no, or the, how movement how is there. Mo- movement is there but it is it will affect it will impact the bottom line and uh, and that is a uh, and that again is a bottom line for us also because we don't want to disturb the bottom line so we will look at an option where the net realization is the highest so if even after the freight cost european realization would be the highest then we will sell in europe otherwise we'll divert that material to some place else where the realization is higher okay okay thanks and second question is uh, uh, can you give us uh, some idea on what is the current scenario in terms of like lithium ion recycling in india and what are your uh, latest plans with respect to that uh, so again i mean i think in the shorter term uh, Uh, nothing has changed we are still very keen and still india is a i mean it's premature to talk about lithium ion recycling currently because it may take 5 uh, to 6 years for actual volume to come into recycling for lithium ion but we are very keen uh, even right now 
our technical team is in uh, china uh, looking at options to uh, to put up a pilot project in in india uh, at mundra so hopefully uh, you will see, see some action by uh, quarter 1 of next year i mean there are some small companies which are into lithium ion recycling so uh, uh, sorry to interrupt shabri yeah no it's a follow up join? it's a follow yeah, up to this question please, only please. Yeah, yeah, so uh, so uh, just wanted to know i mean in terms of like techno te- technical know how and other things uh, are you like uh, interested in those kind of uh, uh, those kind of opportunities yeah if 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 yeah definitely if there are some uh, technologies available that can uh, 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 that can give a, a breakthrough into lithium ion battery recycling definitely we are uh, we are looking at such opportunities also to Right, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Fialoke from Ratnataya Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon, Nageshi. Uh, I have three quick questions, if you would allow me. Uh, the first one is: Could you share the closing inventory number for this quarter? Uh, the closing inventory number is. Approximately 670, uh, 690 crores. 690 crores, and essentially the 120 odd crores that has increased, that is right. kind of what the orders that got stuck. But you have already manufactured. Correct, uh, correct. So we have certain uh, finished goods, but we could not ship it because of this reason. And certain goods were in uh, in transit, which we moved from overseas to India. So because of these two issues, uh, the in- inventory got slightly higher. Uh, and just a clarification on the EBITDA per ton for lead. Essentially, what you said was there is because of such a disruption, there is there is opportunistic sort of pricing available in the market, and that's what we have taken advantage of, uh, which will definitely normalize as soon as the volume situation normalizes. Yeah, so it's part partly because of the arbitrage opportunity, and partly also because when you reduce the volumes, you reduce the volumes that give you the uh, minimum EBITDA numbers. So, but what kind of business was that? I mean, because if so, for example, like, tolling business, although the ROC is equal or even higher than the ROC that is given by the other business, but the EBITDA margins are slightly lower in tolling business also. Because there is no working capital requirement, there is no capital requirement as all. So, generally, we also consider ROC as a as a uh, I mean. A, so ROC is also equally important to us, as is EBITDA margin. So, it, because we are dealing into various mechanism, various geographies, so EBITDA margins on a consolidated level is uh, 18 to 19 rupees. But if you look at each and every uh, business uh, per se, then ROC is a better marker to understand uh, which business is more lucrative for us. In this case, because uh, uh, the volumes are going down, so we we decided to, and also because there was no alternative for us to sell our product, uh, our overseas material into we. Imported that material into India, so the EBITDA margins have increased. But as you see that the volume, uh, the inventory levels have also gone up, so the ROC has dipped a little. Although it is still uh, more than 25% uh, uh, that we have benchmarked ourselves for. But if we had done tolling business, then the ROC would have improved a little, but the EBITDA margins would have come down. Got it. Uh, EBITDA margins per ton, but the overall EBITDA per ton, overall EBITDA would have absolute EBITDA would have gone up. Understood, sir. I understand what you're saying. Uh, sir, could you give us the capac- current capacity for lead specifically? So uh, the current capacity for lead uh, is 231,000, and the total capacity is 285,000, 286,000. Understood. Last question, sir. On the presentation, you report an order book, uh, which for the last two quarters has been around in the sixty thousand tons uh, number. Could you just help us understand what this order book is? Does it generally have the age of one quarter, or does that also include some longer term contracts? Love to understand what that number really represents. So, so it covers both. Uh, it covers both long term also and uh, short term also. Generally, we have a contract uh, with. Any OEM for uh, for a year, the quantities are fixed, but the pr- prices are based on uh, on on that month's price. So some of the contracts are for entire year; other contracts could be for a quarter also. So, so uh, including 
it includes the uh, the contracts with the OEMs and certain contracts with the with the large metal traders like Trafigura, Glencore. Under also, with they undertake certain quantities based on uh, the pricing could be uh, on the on the market price basis. And so, uh, is there an average age for this order book that you generally sort of think of? Uh, I'm just trying to understand from this order book how things look. So, so order orders are generally for the contract is basically as I mentioned that on a on a weighted average it could be uh, very difficult to three to four months. But generally the contract is for for the entire year with some of the uh, OEMs. But the prices keep on changing. You know, so what for example. Uh, there's the OEM says uh, excite, so they will give you a, a firm commitment to buy say 1,000 tons per month for the next year at a particular premium over the LME of that month. Correct, sir. I understand. I understand. And that 12,000, the entirety of that 12,000 is included in the 16,000 number. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. That's all. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Janisha Karia from Antic Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. So, firstly, if you can just uh, help us understand the adjustment that we have done uh, in the footnote uh, below the results about 18.8 crores adjustment for nine months and in the quarter. So, what exactly is that adjustment? And in the previous quarter also, we have made some reversals. So, if you could just explain that. Yeah, so. Basically, what we do is uh, the intent is to make some clarification on the the amount of uh, hedging uh, or currency and commodity hedging, which we uh, you know, uh, which we which is part of the other income, which we take as a uh, consideration into uh, the operational income. So that amount reflects that part, uh, which is which we have considered in the in the uh, uh, taken in in the other income, but considered in the special income. Okay, so we have classified uh, eighteen point eight crores from other income to operational income. Is, is that understanding yes. right? Correct, correct. Okay. Uh, okay, so what would be the absolute amount of commodity uh, uh, hedging gains for the quarter? Commodity is approximately 20, uh, for this quarter it is approximately 20 crores. Okay. And that will be common a part of the revenue. Yeah. So that's a basically, uh, effectively that is, that, is, that is a part of revenue. Okay. But in uh, financials, where is it exactly disclosed if it's 20 quarters and so not this is, this is reflected in the financials in the other income. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, there is a decline in the segmental assets for uh, aluminium, plastics, and turnkey segments. So, uh, is there any uh, assets that we have sold for this division? So, we have not sold anything. Oh. Uh, we are sorry. Segmental uh, assets that we report in the segmental financials below the uh, PNL. So, there is a so decline that, on the sequential. Uh, no, no. So, that, that represents. Uh, Including the assets, including the working capital, the inventory, and the receivables also. Uh, okay. So, uh, so could you please explain see if we uh, see the reported EBITDA per kg for aluminium segment for the quarter is around nine thousand rupees, uh, nine rupees per kg. Uh, yes. But if I uh, calculate the EBIT per kg for aluminium division, it's approximately around eleven rupees. So, uh, why is the EBIT higher than the EBITDA? Yeah. So there is a uh, decrease of depreciation also. Okay. Uh, and there is a uh, so, so there is a uh, there is a below the line there is a uh, unallocable unallocated income also, which represent uh, there is certain uh, hedging loss also, which is in case of aluminium there is a hedging loss of around one point point uh, eight uh, crore eighty lakhs, which is reduced from this EBIT for calculating the pattern EBITDA. Okay, understood. Understood. Uh, uh, so next is, uh, if you could just help us the capex spends for the nine months uh, for existing and new articles. 
Capex for you are talking about Capex for uh, for the nine months of FY24. How much uh, have we spent? So uh, we have spent approximately. Uh, so total Capex is eighty eighty five crores. But out uh, uh, sorry seventy eight crores we have spent in nine months. Uh, out of this, approximately ten uh, crores is for new verticals, which is rubber. So uh, now we are in the process of replicating the rubber, which is uh, cycling vertical, and uh, replicating from we started from Ghana, and now we are replicating it to Mozambique, Senegal, Tanzania, all the locations. And later we plan it to put it in India also. Okay, uh, and sixty uh, eight crores will be for the existing verticals. So in our presentation, we have guided for uh, FY22 capex spend of uh, 159 crores for existing verticals and 45 for the new verticals. So uh, it will be deferred uh, in the next year, right? Yeah. So whatever uh, left over will be taken care of. Uh, take uh, will be taken forward for the next year because there is a certain uh, new verticals which we are working on, like lithium ion and paper recycling, slightly uh, we. We are taking some more studies and more uh, robust, you know, uh, supply chain establishment before we go and uh, spend some capex on that. Okay, and for the existing verticals, we have been guiding for a FY24 capacity of three lakh twenty-four thousand metric tons, uh, including rubber. So we'll be able to meet that with the limited capex that we are doing in the existing and new verticals this year, or there will be some yeah, downward we, Of course, we are. We are we are planning we are planning to have a, a new plant. So maybe uh, we may not be doing it uh, by March end, but maybe by April or May we we should reach this to this target uh, because we are establishing Oman also. We are uh, in the process of establishing uh, rubber at all the locations, and uh, we are expanding certain capacities in Mundra and Chitur also. So, what are we budgeting the end of year end capacity? Uh, if not three lakh twenty four thousand tons. So, it should be we should reach to this target. Uh, maybe slightly one month delay. Okay, understood. Uh, uh, what will be the cash flow from operations and working capital days uh, as on December? If you can just sorry, uh, the cash flow from operations and working capital days. Sorry to interrupt, Janish. Can you join the queue again? Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kabra from Picadia Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, hi, Yogesh. Hi, Sunil. Uh, thank you for taking my question. I have a couple of them. Uh, number one, uh, I know that you know we have given a vision of 35% CAGR and profitability for 2027. uh but as of the last three quarters it feels like you know we are missing the mark there so i just want to hear any reflections that you guys may have on how to look at that guidance from maybe not from a four year perspective but even from this year and the next year's perspective with the new macroeconomic situations and the issue, challenges in the business uh yeah yeah uh, we agree that I, i think we are a little off mark of the 35% uh, bottom line that we suggested part of it is because of the aluminum prices dip, as I, as we mentioned earlier also the aluminum and plastic business uh, uh, didn't give us the uh, the kind of uh, profits that we were envisaging earlier but uh, i think we are on a recovery line uh, recovery path now we we already see some changes uh, in aluminum and also plastic uh, Uh, in plastic also i think we were expecting epr to kick in a little faster but i think it is a little slow in the sense that implementation of that epr has taken some time but we also see some changes happening uh, uh, now uh, uh, on the field uh, so we believe that these things will will start giving us impact if not uh, in the next quarter but definitely by first quarter of next year so that will change the bottom line structure overall uh, and as as far as revenues are concerned uh, we mentioned earlier also that is not very important because in some cases uh, when we import the material into india there is some elimination also uh, but overall this may not go in a in a perfectly straight line uh, i mean it will it may not be a linear growth but by in the next 3 years uh, we see uh, 35% overall cagr so some quarters may be a little lower uh, in terms of that growth path but eventually we will reach uh, the committed path 
very soon. Makes sense. So, uh, and, and you know, uh, my second question was going to be along exactly those lines, the aluminium and plastic business. Uh, I think there is an external event that we are hoping will happen, which is, you know, the APR policy gets implemented. And also, I think you guys are looking to set up with MCX some kind of financial products that enables you to do more sustainable and, you know, a stable business here. So, just wanted to figure it from you, your guys' perspective. And I think you mentioned maybe a quarter or two quarters, but uh, are you hearing anything that is changing around these policies and is MCX about to come mm-hmm. down? What do you guys think yeah. is going to be the timelines for this? Yeah, so it, it's not about hearing. We we are seeing uh, things happening. We already are in discussion with quite a few OEMs. We have start we have started picking up their material, but in terms of making uh, uh, some products out of it, is taking a little longer because it, in plastic it's not very simple. You have to do a lot of uh, trials before you you end up uh, making material that that is suitable for the OEMs. So it is taking a little longer, but uh, we we are seeing uh, uh, things changing. Uh, actually. Uh, a lot due to the CPR. We we are getting a lot of material also available, but but in plastic, generally no two materials are same. So we are getting a lot of uh, uh, challenges in, in terms of uh, how to segregate those materials and how to make something useful out of those materials. But we definitely are working on it, and uh, definitely it will have impact. As I mentioned, not probably in a quarter or two quarters, but the we see that we are on the right path in plastic. In aluminium, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier also, because we are not hedging, so the, the, if, the, if there is any fluctuation in the prices of aluminium, it reflects on the on the bottom line of the business, which uh, which has been the case this year. But now the prices have stabilized and we, we don't see the prices going down from, uh, uh, from the current prices. Uh, the business has also stabilized. So we, we are uh, uh, planning to increase the volumes also and, of course, uh, the overall bottom line will also improve uh, going forward in, in aluminium. But in plastic, definitely, although it may take a little longer to 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 stabilize, but we think that we are on the right path. Got it. And lastly, uh, the Red Sea issue, uh, you know, it's already been another month into Q4, so, and, and at least from the headlines that I can read, it doesn't seem like it's uh, getting resolved anytime soon. So, in terms of finding alternative buyers, you must already be well in the process of doing that. As yes, you of yes, yes, we 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 already have done it. We have, we have uh, diverted some of the material already, but uh, getting a buyer for the entire uh, uh, I mean uh, production is not that easy uh, because in, in the short term, not in the long term. Mm-hmm. And, as I mentioned, that we have started diverting some of the material into India also, which has impacted the bottom line because it, some of it is in transit and some of it gets eliminated when you consolidate the entire uh, the balance sheet. Hmm. It will start giving effect from next quarter onwards. From this quarter, definitely, and from next quarter onwards, uh, we will be able to dilute all the material, all the increased uh, inventory that we have. Got it. But then the margin will come down, right? When we start diluting this extra inventory. Not, not much. We 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 we'll, uh, we generally look at look at other options where because trade cost is very important. So if if we can somehow reduce that trade cost, uh, there may be some issue. But increased uh, volume will take care of that uh, reduction in the in in the prices or in the in the premium. Our term will go down, yes, but uh, absolute. Uh, uh, EBITDA margin will improve with the volumes. Got it. Understood. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kush Nahar from Electrum Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, I just had one question. Uh, what would be our uh, domestic sourcing percentage for our Indian plants uh, this quarter? Yeah, so uh, it is slightly reduced. So, so the percentage is approximately uh, 30, 36% at this moment for this quarter. 36%. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Piyush Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Sir, I just want to understand, we have this 2027 vision. So, right now, our largely sale is dominated by lead. And our capacity level is 57% overall. So, this 2027 and future growth, 
which product segment will will uh, will be the driver of growth so uh, even in led we are considering a growth of around 15 to 20% but others definitely including plastic probably will grow much faster so our target is to bring down lead contribution to uh, less than 75% and 25% plus business would come from non lead businesses so out of that of course uh, plastic uh, would grow the fastest uh, if we i mean sitting today we can uh, we are estimating that plastic to grow much faster but uh, aluminum also would grow faster than lead and then we are also talking about other businesses uh, rubber paper steel lithium ion battery recycling businesses would also contribute today how much is non lead business what is the percentage mm-hmm. of today non lead business today it's around 12 to 13% so and we are targeting that we will able to achieve a 25% type of lead business correct yeah. 15 to 20% increase in lead business many uh, i'm saying non lead business we are giving a target of 25 yeah so 25 correct. plus yes yes absolutely yes. okay the next thing sir uh, on uh, i'm new to the company the first thing i want to understand ki we have a plants in south africa four five plants in south africa so basically these are the plants for sourcing of scrap and and recycling there or it is these plants are also making the finished goods since all the plants are, are recycling as well as making the product also finished goods selling to a customer or what how yes so all our plants overseas there are uh, five plants in africa and one in sri lanka currently doing recycling of lead aluminum and plastic and almost all of that material is sold to third parties we only bring that material to india whenever indian uh, markets are more conducive as compared to the global markets but otherwise uh, during normal operations the entire uh, product from these materials are sold to countries in uh, europe us asia pacific china japan etc so they are making finished products and then send, selling it uh, to these countries how much is our export sales out of overall contribution so uh, total uh, you can say the international sales is currently 45% which uh, is used to uh, 50 50% or 55% historically slightly reduced because of this issue so Uh, it's not um, export sales. Uh, we export certain goods from India also, but we can say the international sales which is sold outside India. So that is forty-five uh, percent at this moment. Okay. Last thing, sir. Uh, we are also doing this recycling of rubber. I, uh, sir, we are doing this rubber rubber recycling also. So this includes, I believe, a tire also. So I have seen few players uh, who are making a let's say a fifteen twenty percent type of margin in rubber and tire. So are are margin also in similar line because few are people are making a sodium uh, silicate, fuel oil, steel wire. So are products also in same category and same margin, and maybe we not able to see the blended margin or yeah, something else. So I so currently whatever tire uh, recycling we are doing, we are using it for captive consumption only. So you, you don't see any uh, differentiated margins in tire. so it is it's already incorporated in the margins of uh, specially of lead and to some extent in aluminum recycling because it's for captive consumption only but the new tire plants that we are going to put up uh, uh, are we're going to show you a separate uh, line for tire verticals also and the margins are definitely in the same line as you are mentioning okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of sharan an individual investor yeah uh, thanks oh. so you are not audible hello yeah please yeah am i audible yeah yeah now yes sir yeah so uh, uh, yeah thanks for the opportunity uh, i'd like to know the status of uh, the oman plant which is like uh, 50% designed to enter what is the status and by when it will get permission so uh, we have already established a company there a joint venture there we have been allocated land by the oman government and uh, the the process is right now we are waiting for them to give a go ahead to so the environmental study also has been submitted to the to the government now we waiting for them to give a clearance 
to set up a plant the plant erection uh, the, sorry the fabrication of the plant has already started we have already fabricated more than 50% of the total plant uh, so we are now just waiting for that uh, uh, go ahead uh, in terms of clearances uh, environmental clearances clearances from the government once that happen i i think and we are we are uh, estimating that uh, by q1 and or q2 of next year that plant will be operational Okay, and the, what all the recycling uh, will happen there overall? So in the first stage, in the, the first stage we are recycling lead, but we are going to recycle lead, plastic, aluminium, all three uh, in Oman. Okay, and uh, another question. So the, there are talks in the industries about uh, solar panel and solar glass and other stuffs. As solar is getting paid, so that recycling. Are you uh, working with any of these solar? uh companies related companies for uh, doing a turnkey solution or any jvs for uh, recycling related to that because solar contains many materials like uh, not just glass copper aluminum everything it contains the whole panel so yeah yeah uh, so. yes i understand but uh, we are not looking at solar uh, currently as a recycling vertical because we already have our hands full we are already thinking of too many lines so as of now we because in any case the life of a solar panel is around 25 years so it will take some time although we we understand that some of the solar panels have started coming for recycling but even currently the volume is not that big so probably eventually we will go into solar panel recycling also but currently it's not in the agenda sure and one quick question uh, do you have any uh, inorganic plan of any acquisition or anything yeah yeah we keep uh, uh, keep looking at uh, options uh, of uh, but there has to be some value in the sense that uh, as you know uh, we manufacture or we fabricate and design our own plants uh, so in india it is very difficult to find a plant uh, that is uh, of the same level as we design so we we will not buy something in the existing verticals wherever we are present but if it is say for example a taking over a lithium ion battery recycling plant or maybe a paper plant then we are very open to those things okay because as we see a lot of uh, small companies which are into recycling but not in the same segment as you are but uh, different like for example mobile or laptops or any electronics recycling so just wanted to know if you are looking for yes yeah, we we constantly look at options of opportunity to 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 uh, for mergers and acquisitions also and uh, yeah. So, if there is a good opportunity, then we'll definitely be considering that as well. Okay. Yeah. Can you throw some quick light on the turnkey solution? How is that business going? And as India is, everyone is talking about is lot of manufacturing is coming here. So, how is the turnkey solution? Uh, you are seeing growth. So, currently, the turnkey solution is only uh, for the recycling verticals that we uh, we are into. So, we only. Uh, as of now we are only making lead recycling plants and aluminum recycling plants and to some extent some plastic recycling uh, products also although not the complete uh, plastic recycling line uh, currently and most of these uh, it's it's basically a very uh, it's more of a r&d for us it's more of a thing to improve our operational efficiencies uh, so it helps us in putting our plant at a faster rate uh, and at a at a cheaper rate as compared to competitors and also help us in improving our yield and efficiency uh, but at the same time we also sell it to uh, customers who want recycling plants outside so it's doing well as of now uh, uh, giving us a revenue but the, in, in terms of revenue it's not it's not a, i mean it's not a very big percentage of the total revenue probably around only One to two percent of the total revenue comes from the uh, from the turnkey projects. It's more of a strategical uh, thing for us. Sure. Yeah. Uh, th thanks for the time and the uh, answer. Uh, wish you all the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Yogesh Malhotra for closing comments. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and thank you everyone for participating in this call we trust that we have addressed all your inquiries during the session however if there is any remaining questions please feel free to reach out to our investor relations team at goindia advisors 
Once again, we extend our gratitude to all the participants for joining us today. Thank you and have a great day. On behalf of Antic Stock Broking, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and now you may disconnect your lines. Thank you.